I, I mentioned the King Chronicles was my first album. But one of my first singles was You Really Got Me. I brought the original of You Really Got Me back in 64. Um, and then I followed the Kinks in the early 60s through, you know, You Really Got Me all day and all the night. One of my favorite songs, favorite singles in the States was A Well-Respected Man. Uh, and then like many other people who listen to the Kinks, I kind of lost track of them in those kind of dark years, we might say, in the United States from 65 through 69. Um, and then King Chronicles came out, and that album just did it for me. I listened to these four sides of just magnificent songs, songs that I wasn't familiar with because Waterloo Sunset really wasn't a hit in the United States, and neither was Days. It was just, it happened. It was just one of those bumps from the blue. You know, I went to see um, Jerry and the Pacemakers with my friend. There was a group of us from school, and we went there. And um, I wasn't really, into, I wasn't into the Kinks before that, but one look at Ray, and that was it. You know, and. Uh, 40 years on, I'm still there. Thank you for the day. Uh, maybe I was 13 or 15, and Ventura, very interested in The Who at the time, and, and looked at a magazine, uh, and this was actually a reprint of something from the 60s, and there was an interview with, uh, with members of The Who, and they said, uh, what do you think of the kinks? And John Entwistle and Keith Moon, I think, uh, just responded, great. And that was all that it took. The first time we, I saw them live, I took some friends from high school to the Arlington Theater in Santa Barbara, and it was so incredibly exciting uh, when they first came out and did Really Got Me and finished with uh, Victoria. It was still one of the most exciting concerts I'd ever been to. The first time I heard about the Kinks was uh, listening to them on the radio when they first came out, whenever the hits came out, as we were heading to a dance, some kind of sock up, and when we got there, it just turned out to be a dull affair and we were sitting around and looking and I finally turned to the, one of the guys and said, you know, we could have a better time at home listening to the Kinks. And they all kind of agreed with me. We all got in the car, went home, listened to the Kinks, new Kinks album and I was really knocked out by it. There were a lot of songs on there that I hadn't heard before and some that I was familiar with, but it's just always different when you can replay them over and over. And from then on, I was a big Kinks fan. It was a double header, November 15th and 16th, 1972. Felt Forum, New York City. The thing that amazed me were the fans when I first entered the Felt Forum. They were insane. Throwing confetti all over, very loud. Schaefer beer was all over the place. And then the band hit the stage with Top of the Pops, and it was rock and roll chaos. I've been to a few shows before that, but I've never seen anything like this. It was insane. The fans were nuts. The concert was great. And that was my first show. So you've been a, a Kinks fan for 12 years? 12 years. How did it all start for you, Trace? Give the people what they want. And he does. Oh, like... Ray gives the people what they want all the time. Hi, everybody. It's me, to Ray C. Anyway, I got into the Kinks with the Give the People What They Want album, which is a big, it was a big hit in America. It was on the radio all the time. And then a friend lent me the CD, or no, actually the tape, because right at the time the CD's coming out. And my roommate and I just loved it, got into it, played it all the time. Well, the first time I saw the Kinks was in Lincoln, Nebraska, and where I was going to school at the time. And that was the biggest thrill because I didn't expect them to come to the city where I was living. And uh, let's see, I'd been a Kinks fan for two years by then, and it was just head over heels in lust with Ray. And um, yeah, it was a great gig. You know, one of my favorite times in London was um, when I had lost the faith and I discovered the Kinks in high school, but Later, after college and marriage and moving to Hawaii, I just uh, kind of didn't think about it much. I didn't really bring their records with me. It, the age of the record was over. And then I was in London with my wife and uh, just touring around and not thinking about the kinks at all. And uh, I saw a sign, a road sign that said Pimlico. And it just kind of stuck in my brain the way, that's just the way my brain works. These things will float around sort of looking for a connection, you know. Pimlico. And about a week later, I hadn't forgotten it, and it suddenly dawned on me that was a word in a Kinks song. It's a place in London. So, uh, 
song goes like this. Let's see. Ever since I was a child, I long to wander wild through the bright city lights. Find myself a place that I could call my own. It was always my ambition to see Piccadilly ramble and roam around Soho and Pimlico and Savile Row. Walk down the Abbey Road So I say